Hello everyone, welcome back to today's tutorial on database functions. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I recommend checking them out to learn Excel from basic to advanced concepts. As you can see, we have a list of all the database functions available in Excel. Let's start with dsum. The dsum function is used to calculate the sum of a given database based on specific criteria. Enter the function, and you'll notice it requires three parameters. The first parameter is the database itself, followed by the field to calculate the sum for, and then the criteria to apply. Select the database range and press F4 to lock the cell references. Now, specify the field as salary and use cell references for the criteria such as H14 and I15. Lock these references as well and hit enter. When the second criteria is blank, the function sums up the entire salary column. However, if you enter a department in cell I15, it calculates the sum accordingly. To make the formula more dynamic, we can refer to the field using the value in cell H18. Now, if you change the value in H18, the function adapts and calculates the sum for the chosen field. Let's also compare the dsum function with the sum if function. For instance, let's use sum if to sum age column for the IT department. You'll notice that the dsum result matches the sum if output. We can easily switch the field back to salary or IT to observe the corresponding updates in the output. And also, we can change the criteria of department to, for example, as finance. Now, let's proceed to the dAverage function. The dAverage function in Excel is another database function that calculates the average of selected database entries based on specified criteria. To use this function, start by entering it, and you'll notice that it also requires the same three parameters as dsum. Begin by selecting the database range and locking the cell reference. Next, choose the field for which you want to calculate the average. Then, specify the criteria, such as the department. Now, here's the interesting part. If you modify the criteria, for instance, changing it from T to finance, you'll observe that both the dsum and dAverage functions update their outputs. This is because both functions are referencing the same criteria. Next in our discussion, we will delve into the dcount function, which is employed to count specific fields from the database. To employ this function, begin by entering it, then select the database range while locking the cell reference. Proceed by specifying the field, such as using cell H20, and determine the criteria. As an illustration, it might return a value of 2 for the finance department due to two recorded salaries. Upon altering the criteria, for instance, changing it to IT, the output shifts to counting three salaries for that department. Continuing our exploration, we encounter the dcount of function. This function follows the same sequence, enter it, and repeat the preceding steps. Notably, in this instance, we are counting first name. An interesting observation is that if we change the field for D count to first name, it returns a count of zero. This outcome is due to the function's focus on numeric values, as discussed in a previous video. The count functions work exclusively with numeric data. Shifting our focus, we encounter the dmax function, which returns the maximum value of a given field from the database based on specified criteria. As before, input the function and supply the parameters locking cell references. Then utilizing the field and specifying the criteria, the result, in this case, could be, for instance, the highest salary within the IT department, which might be 62,000. In a similar vein, the dmin function is introduced mirroring the previous steps and parameters. In this scenario, it returns the minimum value of a designated field. In the demonstration, the outcome could be 55,000. Remarkably, if we manipulate or remove the department criteria, the returned outputs for dmax and dmin encompass the entire database, 
with the department as a variable. This becomes evident as the department is left blank. Continuing our exploration, we arrive at the D product function, which calculates the product of values within a set of records, provided certain criteria are met. Employing the function involves familiar steps, but in this case, the outcome can be extensive. To manage this, consider formatting the result as a whole number by removing decimals. In instances where we remove the department criteria, the output might escalate into billions. Finally, we conclude with the dget function. Notably, this function comes with a constraint. If the criteria field contains multiple records, an error is returned. This constraint becomes evident when using the function. To illustrate, begin by entering the function and adhering to the established pattern designating the database range, selecting the field such as first name, and setting the criteria. However, caveat emerges as the function returns an error. A closer inspection reveals that only the ID column contains unique values. Consequently, by adapting the criteria to the ID field and adjusting IDs accordingly, accurate results can be derived. As an example, changing the department values and altering the criteria yields different names, demonstrating the function's reliance on unique values within the criteria field. Continue to experiment and explore the intricacies of these functions by adapting the dataset and criteria as needed. Stay tuned for further insights and tutorials. Should you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.